after I had just moved back to Japan from the US, my Japanese friend walked into the room while I was devouring a large bag full of delicious cookies. She looks at me and says, Oh, you like cookies? And my instinctive response was, No, I hate cookies. I would never eat them voluntarily. She then starts going on about how she would never eat so much of something she dislikes and how she thinks it's impossible for a person to hate cookies before I interrupt her to tell her that I was just kidding. She gives me a confused look. I was even more confused. On another day, I was watching a TV show with another friend when a captivating scene was interrupted by a very long iPhone commercial. Irritated, I said, wow, thank goodness for advertisements. I think now I might know what an iPhone is. With an intrigued, surprised face, my friend slowly faces me and says, you don't know iPhone? She must have thought I was insane, but she smiled at me ever so sincerely and proceeded to explain to me what an iPhone is before seeing my iPhone on the table and stopping. She looked at me like a betrayed puppy, and I simply could not believe what had just happened. This sort of thing was a daily occurrence for me. Every time it happened, I would think, was my timing wrong? Was it the tone? Could I have been any more clear that I actually love cookies and no iPhones? But over time, I realized that this wasn't happening because I phrased it incorrectly or because I just had confused friends. It was because this sort of sarcasm didn't really exist in Japanese. Upon this realization, I finally gave up and started putting efforts into not making any more sarcastic commentary in Japan. Five long years and a move to Hong Kong later, I now got this opportunity to really dig deep into the gap between sarcasm in English and Japanese. Sarcasm translates to hiniku in Japanese. Literally speaking, it means skin and meat. It derives from the history of how the Buddhist monk Bodhidharma used to judge his followers based on how much they learned in their practices. He had four grades, the skin, the meat, the bone, and the bone marrow. If he told you that you have learned the skin of the practice, it meant you only learned it to a surface level. On the other hand, if you were told that you have learned it to the bone marrow, it meant that you have fully understood it and its purpose from the core. Since skin and meat are on the outer layers of bone and bone marrow, they don't indicate the true essence of the practice. Now it means sarcasm in the sense that it does not indicate the true meaning of what is being said. From what I figured out, hiniku is an umbrella term that consists of passive aggressiveness, backhanded compliments, and irony. Whenever you enter a trashed, smelly public restroom in Japan, there's usually a sign on the door that says, thank you for always keeping our restrooms clean. In a Japanese drama, the main character would often approach her enemy by saying something like, you look nice for your age. The problem only surfaces when I try to use a type of sarcasm outside of these three categories. To avoid this problem, you could just avoid using sarcasm altogether like I did, but I couldn't help but think about the cases where that isn't an option. For instance, what would the Japanese subtitles for this untranslatable sarcasm look like in American TV shows? They wouldn't dare leave it subtitles, would they? Or what would a character say in a Japanese dub version of an American movie when they're supposed to say something that's sarcastic but not passive-aggressive, a backhanded compliment, or irony? To answer my question, I decided to watch some scenes from some of America's most beloved sitcoms. I went through several subtitle clips, and as it turns out, they translated sarcasm pretty straightforwardly like any other line. They were recognizable as playful, unserious intentions. I then went through some scenes that were Japanese dubbed. I thought everything was fine until I really realized how much I was relying on these facial expressions. When I closed my eyes, most of these scenes didn't sound very sarcastic. Even passive aggressiveness, which is a type of sarcasm within the umbrella, 
wasn't serving its purpose. I was only absolutely sure that a line had a sarcastic undertone and shows with a laugh track. When they laughed, I knew that the seemingly sincere line was an indirect mark of irony. Only a small portion of sarcasm is dependent on the phrases themselves. Without the full effects of facial expression and tone of voice, they are just words with ambiguous meaning and intentions. That's why it's so hard to get a message across through text without any misunderstanding. To think of it now, the Japanese voice actors said their lines in an over-exaggerated manner, just like the original actors, to indicate that what they're saying isn't equal to what they mean. Yet I still had a hard time figuring out if they were being serious or not. I finally understood the feeling of confusion in the way my friends did during the cookie and iPhone incident. However, there were occasional instances where the line wasn't over-exaggerated and it was perfectly clear that it was sarcastic. If it wasn't over-exaggerated, what made the line so easily identifiable as sarcasm? I played it over and over and compared it with the other scenes and I realized that was exactly what made it sound so sarcastic. The lack of over-exaggeration, the plainness, from this outcome, I have come to the conclusion that for the most part, over-exaggeration does not indicate satire in Japanese. In the country where anything less than overly polite is considered rude, over-exaggeration just shows that you're fully engaged in the conversation. So to put it the other way around, if you want people to know that you don't really mean what you're saying, it's best not to over-exaggerate. Simply put, sound bored. It's hard to believe that I hadn't come to this conclusion earlier, since this is such a common and valid way to get across the message that you're being sarcastic. In any language, really. I mean, think about it. When's the last time someone told you, thanks a lot, and they actually meant it? Regardless of language, the majority of our answers are probably never. So I guess what I learned in the end from my long, winded analysis of sarcasm is that people from the opposite sides of the world interpret sarcasm differently due to cultural differences. But the one thing that we do have in common is that we can all express sarcasm by being simply emotionless. Nothing complicated. If I could go back on that day and instead say something like, thanks a lot for the iPhone commercial, Apple, in an obviously dull voice, my friend and I would have been able to share a nice laugh instead of an awkward interaction. And that's the kind of laugh that everyone in this room could share too. Thank you.